think I should just watch ahead. <laughs> no! I, I, I'm going to blame my scheduling and that I have to watch ahead, but also I know this series is steeped in spoilers because y'all have already seen it and I have somehow made it out without seeing it. So I'm Romania Black and we're on episode three of Berserk and... I am really enjoying this series so far. I know we just started, but Griffith's character is amazing. I'm loving the lore, the secrets, the mystery. Castro's great. I like this quirky band of mercenaries with Corcus and little Rickert, who's probably going to die. <laughs> and I'm going to be heartbroken. And then Guts. Guts is such a very interesting protagonist because Guts is reminding me, like, the way he's kind of... It's not that he's stoic, but the way that he's kind of closed off reminds me a little bit of Ichigo from Bleach. Like, a, a little bit. A teeny tiny bit. Um, but it's very interesting. It's like, he's not quite as feral. I was, I know I was drawing a lot of references to Vinland Saga in the last episode. He's not quite as feral as Thorfinn from season one of Vinland Saga, and that's all I'll say. But he's not, you know, he, he's, he's kind of like a mixture of Thorfinn and Ichigo and, no, I wouldn't say Eren. <laughs> but we might get into that. But he's a very interesting protagonist because he's, He's supposed to be our protagonist. We're following him on this journey. He's a loner. He's a wanderer. He doesn't want to have anything to do with anybody. And we don't, we get kind of an inkling of why that is based on his past with Gambino and the fact that he's, you know, murdered nearly everybody he's come in contact with. But he, so he seems to want to stay away from people. But then Griffith is like, no, I want to use you. Stay with us. And he's just kind of like, this is completely against my MO. But they decide to challenge each other, and you you made the big goof, Guts. Never go with a guy that says, a guy that agrees that if you beat him, you can do whatever you want. Don't ever agree to those, because that means they know they're going to win. Because Guts was like, well, if I win, I'm going to kill you. And Griffith's like, okay. And Griffith's like, if I win, you do whatever I want. And I'm like, anytime an opposing force says that, run away. Be like, never mind, not interested, because they're probably going to win. And I have a feeling that's what's going to happen. And Guts is going to be forced to go along with Griffith and the Band of the Hawk to wherever that leads to. But there's tied to the thief, there's ties to the Thief Lord. There's stuff about the characters that I'm curious to know more about. Um, I want to know how in the world Rickert got with them because he seems way too innocent to be there. He seems also connected to Corcus, so that might have something to do with it. We have the other blonde elven looking one that we don't have his name yet. He plays with the knives, very Legolas type of character. And then Griffith, speaking of elven, Griffith is just... I'm enamored. I'm like, I was like this the whole time last episode. Like, I will do whatever you want me to, Griffith. You dark would-be king. Let's see where this goes. So I, I like the way that they've set this up. I know a lot of people were like, oh, you should watch episode one first or at the end and skip it. But I'm glad that I watched it first because now I'm intrigued. Now I have this idea of, okay, things are going to lead to this point. What gets us here? And so... I'm very, very excited to see where the story goes. Obviously, please, no spoilers, hints, or clues in the comments, um, but we can talk about the episode itself as it airs. But y'all, I'm just so excited. I'm very excited about Berserk. I really like this series so far, and I'm I'm sure it will be a bunch of sunshine, kittens, and rainbows. My brother was like snorting like, <laughs> so we'll see what happens, but I've talked enough. We're going to go ahead and start and look at Berserk Episode 3. I can't wait. And we're going to do that here in 3, 2, 1. And let's, uh, let's do this, y'all. I'm so glad I can ship this early on in this show. <laughs> you all know that I love shipping. It's great. And I, and I don't expect everybody to be into that as well. But... And, and I don't judge any ships, but you know, Vinland Saga had some fun ships, but but those ships were kind of like, I was maybe forcing them because I was like, ah, you know, we could say this. And with Monster that I'm watching, there's not really any shipping in Monster. It's just more of the, the story. And in Trigun, the retro series I'm watching, yeah, you can ship, absolutely. And there's some context there, but it ain't like this one. <laughs> And I'm so excited. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Griffith and Guts. I mean, I mean, I mean. <laughs> and the funny thing is that, you know, because I'm raised on a farm 
And I think of like the vultures and hawks and buzzards like scouring and picking at the entrails of run over animals. So I think of like a bird eating the guts of something else. So the idea of Griffith and guts being together is kind of like, well, you know, Griffith's having his way with guts. And I'm like, yes, very much. Man, this episode, I really like this series so far. I need the soundtrack. <laughs> need the soundtrack ASAP because I was like that whole battle scene where we got this really great song I was like what is this the heart music the the beautiful melodies I was like I'm like here for the soundtrack what is happening I was all for it so yeah I'm really excited uh, about this series and what we're gonna get out of it because yeah we're getting some good stuff that's for sure but again we keep going back the beginning of this episode to to the start where they're asking the big all important question that mankind they don't have any control over themselves it's all being predetermined by a higher being is that the case or is it law what is it it seems like the show is implying that no there is a higher power and humanity doesn't really have any free will of their own they just have to do whatever I, which is interesting it seems like with griffith having the the little talisman the the bethelet it seems like it almost puts Griffith in the place of the the god looking from above because he pretty much just commands what everybody does. Now, granted, Griffith is the strongest, so there we go. But like, there's so Griffith is so intriguing and very interesting because he seems like he's he seems like he's open to read, but then you're like you don't really know what he's thinking. And I think Casca's big whole de ordeal is like trying to figure out what is Griffith's plan with guts. Does he really, he, she, she determines that he really does trust Guts, but she's like, what do we do with that? Like, I feel like Casca doesn't quite trust Guts. She sees that he could be a problem, but she, she's kind of conflicted because while she sees him as a problem that needs to be taken care of, she's conflicted because Griffith finds use in him and she respects Griffith over everybody else. So she's like, well, the guy I respect the most likes Guts, so I should like Guts, but there's something about him that makes me wary and she's conflicted about that. And then you have Corcus, who's like, let's just get rid of him. And so I guess we need to write this up here and kind of talk about the, the issues that we have going into this episode. Because we have Griffith, who I absolutely love. I love his character to pieces. I'm like, yes, please. Give me all the Griffith. And so he, he finds Guts not only useful, but he trusts and likes him and I think that part of it could be that maybe he finds guts as a kindred spirit maybe Griffith is like I I found somebody that shares this love of battle like I do and it, it, he's the Goku to his Vegeta sort of situation like someone that I can rival with I feel like that's the sense that Griffith has he's found somebody that rivals that rivals his power because he does seem a little wee bit sexist in that he doesn't really acknowledge Casca because she's a woman. Because at the beginning of when we first met Casca, it was like, oh, well, she's the second strongest next to Griffith. And then suddenly Guts came along and now Casca's been bumped to third. But even the body language from the last episode, like even when Casca like confronts Griffith, he like has his hands on her shoulders, like, you know, consoling consoling her and it's just like it seems like Griffith cannot put Casca on the same level as him because she's a woman and I feel like Casca is having some some conflict with that because she's like I respect Griffith I keep his orders I follow them I help keep the troop in line but he doesn't give me as much respect as he's giving guts and she's like what am I missing and I'm like well you're missing a penis it looks like because <laughs> I think that's Griffith's main ordeal and maybe Casca is, I mean, Casca doesn't seem as strong as Guts, so maybe it is just that, that even though Casca was the second strongest, she wasn't on the same level as Griffith like Guts is, and that's what Griffith's been looking for. But it bothers her because she, up until this point, maybe thought that they were equals, and now it's becoming apparent that they're not. So I think that's a big, a big conflict with Casca, and I'm going to put her on here, that Casca's whole thing is that she admires... She admires, respects, and likes to think, likes to think she is equal with Griffith. And I'm not saying that Casca thinks she's stronger or as strong as Griffith. I don't think that's the case. But she, and I think that's the problem, she thinks that she was like right up there on the same level. But now Guts, Guts is revealing 
that she may not be as close to Griffith as she thought. Because she makes the comment that Griffith's never talked as kindly to anyone before. And I'm like, kindly? This is Griffith talking kindly? He dislocated his shoulder. But I take it what you will. We'll, we'll go over that scene. But she's like, wow, Griffith is a lot nicer to him than anybody else. So I think maybe it's, it's coming to Casca's forefront that Guts, Griffith is considering him more of a rival than anyone else. And she's maybe not in as good graces as she thought she was with Griffith. And that's a conflict for her because she's like, well, I thought we were like equals, but we're not clearly. And this guy has just swooped in and claimed the secondhand spot. And she's like, mm, what do I do with these feelings? And so, and it's not necessarily, I don't think it's romantic feelings at all yet. Um, I won't be surprised. I'm going to say first and foremost, I don't want any clues or spoilers. I won't be surprised if Guts and Casca end up liking each other. I don't know how it's going to happen, but there was like a moment in the episode, and we'll talk about it when we get to it, when I go back over the episode, where Guts kind of like looked at her walk away, and I was like, is he going to fall in love with her? And then she's going to be like, what the hell, man? Like, is, is she going to be like Cinderay for Guts, and then be like, I guess I like you? I don't know. I'm not totally into that, because it, it almost feels like it's a forced, like, because she's a woman, she has to love Guts by the end of this. <sighs> and that's a trope. But I won't be surprised if it happens. I do trust the show being smart enough to maybe have circumstances happen along the way that develops their relationship and gets to the point where she does kind of fall for him. H however that's going to happen, right? But maybe not. Maybe that's a manga thing that will happen later. But Guts revealing that she's not as close to Griffith as she thought. And she seems conflicted. She seems conflicted because she's still wary of Guts. Because at the beginning, she was like, we need to kill this guy. This guy's as strong as Griffith. He needs to go because he, if he decides to turn on us, is going to be a problem. And so I feel like she's constantly wary. Like, I don't trust Guts. I don't fully believe that he is going to be on our side all the time. And so she's conflicted because she's like, I don't trust Guts. I think we should get rid of him. However, she's so respectful to Griffith and admires him so much. She's like, well, Griffith said no. So I'm going to do what he says, but she's like constantly like, I get a bad feeling about this and I don't know what to do about that. And so I, I like that the show is definitely portraying Casca as having some conflict with Guts and not knowing what to do about him. Now, Quarkus, Quarkus, on the other hand, is pretty easy to read. Quarkus, I, I like that Casca's kind of, her conflict is a little bit more abstract. Quarkus wants, he wants revenge for... Guts killing Dan and injuring Earl. Corcus just wants revenge. Like, Corcus's whole MO is pretty simplistic. He just wants revenge on Guts. He doesn't like that he's still alive. He thinks Griffith should have killed him, and he wants revenge. Now, the question is going to be in this series, how bent on revenge is Corcus, is he? Like, is Corcus going to keep, you know, because we, we know that time passes, right? So I don't know how long Guts is going to stay in the band with the group or if he's going to go rogue, what's going to happen. We don't know at this point. So we know at some point he goes rogue because he's all by himself in the first episode. So the question is, is Corcus going to keep trying to get revenge? Is he going to try to manipulate and set up a situation to frame Guts or something? Is he going to try to manipulate manipulate to outs, oust guts. I wouldn't be surprised if Corcus, because Corcus is not, he's framed as kind of like a simpleton and kind of simple-minded, but I feel like, you know, they say in several manga and anime that I've watched, and I'm thinking of Bungo Stray Dogs that I'm watching the same times as this series, the most dangerous people is an average person that's desperate. And that strikes me as what Corcus is. He's an average guy. He's not special like Griffith or Casca. He's not weak like some fodder red shirts. He's an average guy, but he's desperate to get revenge on Guts. And that's what terrifies me, is that he is going to do something desperate and get, you know, cause a catalyst that's going to set some shit up. So I am a little bit worried about that, right? And then we have Guts, who I'm going to put over here. And the thing that's interesting about Guts is we know he's a loner. He's a loner. He keeps his word. 
He keeps his word. He does stick with Griffith. He seems fascinated by Griffith. Again, I feel like Griffith and Guts are fascinated by each other because they, it's the first time they've really met somebody of equal power to them. And Guts, you know, doesn't quite understand how Griffith is the way that he is, but he's fascinated by him. And he, he seems to like respect Griffith, even though he doesn't like him. And he is, he keeps his honor and duty bound. But he doesn't want, to, he still doesn't want to get close to the band. And honestly, I don't blame Guts for not wanting to get close to the band because one, he's like, he didn't ask to join this band. He's been strangled, he's been strongholded into it by Griffith. He didn't want to join in the first place. He doesn't really have any connection with any of these individuals. They're not comrades. But also beyond that, it's the idea that he's been surrounded by death his whole life. And it seems like everywhere he goes, people die. So he probably is afraid that some of these people may die along the way. And he doesn't want to get close to them, right? I mean, he has nightmares about this Gambino guy that he clearly was close to in some regard and now has nightmares about him. So I can't quite blame Guts for not wanting to get close to the crew. And also these guys were guys that like two days ago didn't want anything to do with you and wanted you to die. And now they're like, he's a hero. And it's like, is he? Um, but yeah, Rickert, I, uh, I love Rickert with all my heart and I've not told my brother I've started Berserk yet, but I know as soon as I mention Rickert, he's probably gonna be like, mm. because Rickert just has death flags like painted on him all over. Rickert, like his wholesomeness and innocence, I'm like, you're going to die in this series. And I hate it because I love Rickert so much. I don't want him to die, but he just seems like the fodder that's gonna be the catalyst for something. And I'm like, ah, oh, he's gonna get close to guts. Guts is going to like Rickard. He's going to get latched onto him, and then Rickard's going to die. All the blondes in this series are going to die. I'm calling it now. Because we had Gambino dying, and now we have Rickard and that one guy we don't have a name for. I'm like, Ugh. But yeah, I don't know. A Corcus is interesting because of his revenge, and Corcus has not warmed up in the slightest to Guts. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Corcus warms up to Guts along the way, but I don't think so. I love the ending where Corcus and Casca are on either sides watching Guts from afar. And Quarkus is like, this bastard, I hate him, I want him dead. And Casca is just like, I don't know what to do about this. She's like, I want to trust Griffith's judgment because I respect him, but I'm also wary of Guts because I don't like where this is heading. And can we trust this man that's a loner? Is he gonna eventually try to run? I mean, she's like, I don't know what to think about it, right? But it's so fascinating, like this series setting up these characters. And then Pippin just seems like just a big old lug that's like, we're just going to do things, okay? It's going to be all right. So yeah, so we talked about this episode and we had the little, the recap with them. And then we went to the OP. So first battle, that's the name of the episode. First battle. And we have Griffith, Griffith fighting him. I, what's so amazing about Griffith is, yeah, and, and Guts brings it up. He, like, split an axe with his sword. Griffith's sword is, like, very thin and seems like it would be so easy to snap, but it's not. And so I'm wondering if the ta if the behethalet, the, the talisman that Griffith has that he had with his armor, if that's what makes his sword, like, maybe enchanted, makes it to where it can't break. Is it tying his, like, his power and essence to his weapon? We don't know. What's so interesting is that this series, this series gave us in episode one, a very bit of fantastical stuff going on. Like there is some serious supernatural things afoot. But ever since then, no, there has been no supernatural stuff happened since then. So I'm like, okay, okay show. You're just gonna like keep it in the background behind the curtain until it's time to reveal it. So I'm just constantly keeping in mind that something like this is, it's there's supernatural stuff under the surface, right? And Griffith is interesting because Griffith, I'm going to put him, well, he's already up here. He offers, he offers to fight, to fight Guts uh, fully healed. He's like, will it make you feel better if I let you fully heal to fight me? And of course, Guts is like, no, and charges right at him, right? And it just doesn't work. Again, I love the devil tail that's like on the back of Guts' uh, outfit. Now, the thing of it is, Corcus tries to take the opportunity saying we're going to kill him. And I love that Casca's like, who died and made you leader? You know, I love that Casca has that 
sway over him being like she's like you know I'm stronger than you and I will castrate you in front of everyone if you don't back off right and then there's the heart music there's the heart music playing as Griffith is fighting him and like cutting him all over and there's blood splattering everywhere and this beautiful elegant fairy like heart music is playing and Griffith's just like mm -hmm. and then Griffith and Guts tries to like fling the dirt in his face and for a second I was like he's like oh no I'm not pretty and then he lands on top of Guts's sword like it was nothing and balancing on it being like I have he's like Obi-Wan Kenobi and he's like I have the high ground you know I like the way that you fight you'll go to any length to defeat your opponent and there's something to that where it's almost like Griffith admires Guts for how shameless he is. He's like, you know, Griffith is very calculating. He's very calculating, but it's almost as if Griffith, he's putting this persona and this air on, and we know he becomes king at some point. So it almost feels like he's doing all of this in preparation to becoming a king. He's like, I can't be... I can't be shameless like you, Guts, because I'm trying to become king of this country. So for me to become king, I have to present myself in a way that would lead me to be someone that people think could be a king. And I don't think anybody thinks Guts could be a king. Griffith said he's a leader, and I'm like, is he a leader? Is he? But I feel like nobody would buy Guts being a king. He's too brash and abrasive. But Griffith has like an elegance and a strategy to him that would make people be like, oh, he could be a king. Yeah, he seems regal, you know? He's, he's diva and pompous enough. But I feel like that Griffith is doing that be intentionally because he maybe eventually wants to become king and that's like part of his objective. And so he's like, I have to present myself a certain way to achieve this goal. And I think he admires Guts because he's like, you can do anything. You'll go to any length, you'll play dirty, you'll be like shameless and you don't care. He's like, I kind of envy that about you. Is is how it comes across, right? Or it's or it's he's seeing guts as his equal, right? But you can't wield a sword unless I move. So what do you say? And man, guts biting into the sword to get them to throw off balance and go down the hill. I I was like, it made my I was like waiting for it like to cut his mouth or like knock some teeth out. I was waiting for it. I'm like, that is, again, Guts has Guts. He's just, like, not ashamed to go to any length to do it. And he knocks him off the hill. And they're like, oh, my God. And then they're both, they're both tousling, you know. I was waiting for a Lion King, like, the Lion King splurred. And, and there's <laughs> Griffith underneath Guts. And it's like, can you feel <laughs> the love tonight? Like, I was just, I was waiting for it. <laughs> I'm going to edit it to have, I'm going to edit this, I'm going to do an edit to have that be the thing. <laughs> uh, the Lion King stole this, right? And then, <laughs> I'm going to just, I can't, I want to do this edit right now. I can't, y'all, I can't. Oh my god. Oh, and he just punches Griffith in the face. Now, Guts gets in a couple blows. He kicks Griffith and he punches him. And everybody's like, oh my god. They're like, somebody knocked Griffith to the ground. Somebody's letting him have it. Like, Corcus is amazed. And Casca looks a little bit worried. Casca looks worried for Griffith. Again, I would not be surprised if Casca liked Griffith and also respected or idolized him. Hmm. I also think Casca might feel like it's a losing game for her because Griffith um, <clears throat> does not seem to care for her. So in that regard, right, I think he views Casca as useful because Casca really, she kind of is the head babysitter of all these mercenaries. Like she keeps them in line. Like, yeah, Griffith is the absolute order, but she does the like micromanaging behind the scenes, whereas Griffith's doing the overall orders and she keeps them in line with those orders. So I feel like Griffith sees her as useful, but I feel like maybe she hoped that Griffith would see her as more than that and no he sees guts as more than that maybe and she's just like well son of a bitch <laughs> I just I can't y'all I can't and he's like do you like the taste of your own blood and then yeah I'm saying I bet you'd never had that fancy face beaten in well we don't know that right because then Griffith like is like if you defeat if you just admit defeat, I won't dislocate your shoulder. But then he does and he dislocates the shoulder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just, ah, maybe, I love it. Maybe Griffith is Goku and Guts is Vegeta. <laughs> maybe. 
But I, I just love that Griffith is very honest, and whatever he says, he does. There's no beating around the bush. If he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. So I find that so fascinating. And those blue eyes, those blue eyes are just like, they're piercing how blue they are. It's kind of like ethereal, right? And then that moment where he, I was like, the moment he like held Guts's face in his hands, I was like, show, what are we going to do? What are we doing with this moment? Why are you, you're giving me all the shipping fuel. And then he's like, you're mine. You are mine. And I'm like, that is like him just being so possessive and saying, I own you now. Like, are we good? I'm like, ah! And Rickard's like, do you mean it? Do you love him? <laughs> and he's like, he's a member of ours from now on. And Corcus is like, well, son of a bitch. Like, you could just see the instant Corcus's face drops. Like, he's like, I thought you were going to kill him. Like, and I can see where Corcus might feel betrayed by Griffith's decision because Corcus is like, this guy killed like one of our guys and like he's a murderer, which is funny for mercenaries to say that. But Corcus is like, he killed one of our own and you're going to let him just take the guy's place. I'm sure that's how Corcus feels about the situation. I think Griffith is just being tactical and being like, this guy's better use to us alive than dead. And now he owes us. So he's going to comply. Right. So, yeah. And, uh, but I feel like Corcus might also feel betrayed by the other guys who are like, because he's the only one of the group other than Griffith that doesn't raise his arm when it's announced that Guts is going to join them. And Casca is like, huh. She's just like, it's so strange. It's like, I've never seen Griffith use such kind words to anyone. So yeah, I'm sure there's a part of Casca that's kind of like, why does Griffith like this guy so much? Should I like him? She's just like, what, what's the deal? Like, why, why is he so kind to him, right? So this part was a little confusing at first, but I get it now. So basically Griffith and them had gone to a castle, had been hired as mercenaries to go raid this other castle, right? Basically they were hired by a troop to go raid these knights and keep them from advancing any further. And then they were paid off for it. So it was just another job, just another job. And this is Guts's first battle, right? Interesting. Meanwhile, we have Guts sitting there in his tent thinking about Griffith. <laughs> I was beaten like it wasn't even a joke. I was completely beaten. Oh, I just love that in, in Guts's mind, Griffith is like ethereal. It's just, it's kind of hilarious. I just, I absolutely love how hilarious it is. And then he's just like, damn it. He talks openly. He smiles like an innocent kid. He's freaking handsome. I love that he's like, but he dislocated my shoulder cleanly without hesitation. Just like plucking off a doll's arm. I love that Guts is just so frustrated. He's like, what are these feelings? Damn it. Who the hell is he? <laughs> yeah. And that's when he notices. Now, okay. Corcus, sweetheart, I know. You may not be the most smart person in the room, but if you're planning on murdering someone, maybe before you get right outside their tent, <laughs> then you tell the plan to the group instead of waiting till you get right there and then deciding to announce your plan to murder Guts, which is kind of weird. What's kind of weird is he says, he's like, oh, he's like, oh, Griffith will forgive us. If we kill him, it'll be fine. I'm like, will it? I, I feel like Corcus, what's fascinating again about Corcus versus Casca is Casca, she's like, Griffith's rules are absolute. He's our leader. We do this. Like she's loyal to a fault. And Corcus, by Griffith saying he's joining us and Corcus going to kill him, that's clearly like a treason of, it's clearly being a traitor to Griffith's orders. And Corcus doesn't seem like it's going to be a problem. I'm like, I feel like that would be, but okay, sure. And then Casca's like, he's still going to kill you even if he's injured. Go back. Go back to your tent like a good boy, Corcus. And then, then they bring it up. And I was, last episode, I was like, God, I hope that they don't make it a plot point to say, oh, the only reason you care about Guts is because you were sleeping next to him and now you got a crush on him. I was waiting for that to come in here and I was like, oh my God, really? 
Because he's like, why are you trying to save him? Oh, do you have a crush on him? And I can tell that Casca is very frustrated by that because she's like, damn it, no. She's like, you sons of bitches. It's not that I like him. I don't. But I'm conflicted because I want to know why Griffith wants to save him. So she's like, don't get, get your minds out of the gutter. Get away from here. Right? She's like, no wonder you have some feelings for him. And I love that she puts a sword in his face like, do you want me to like stab you? I'll chop off your head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's like, get out. Also love that where in medieval times she found lipstick, but we're not going to bring that up. And so then Gut says that he owes her for saving him. And she's like, no. She's like, I'm just following Griffith's orders. Otherwise, I don't give a damn about you. And of course, Griffith seems like the type that's attracted to Cinderace. So I'm like, don't get any ideas. I feel like, I feel like Griffith's just like, I'm very conflicted. <laughs> Again, I won't be surprised if this series makes Guts and Casca a thing. All I ask is that there is a development in their relationship. I don't want their relationship being she doesn't like him, but because she has a vagina, she suddenly has to like him. <laughs> and that's what I don't want. I If we somehow see the two of them converse and like find a way to connect to one another and find some like common ground and then develop a relationship, I'll be all for it. I can multi-ship. <laughs> But I don't want it to just be like, oh, because she's a female character, we suddenly have to make her a love interest. I'm like, that, why? You know, why can't Griffith be the love interest? They have more chemistry. I mean, especially after he grabs him onto that horse. Don't think that was like the best shipping thing for me. But yeah, the moment he watches her walk away and he's sitting there like thinking about whatever, we don't get him like, we don't get inside his head to see what he's thinking about. But he looks over at the sword. And I like that we go from that to him sleeping next to the sword, like, to keep just to be wary it's uh, interesting so yeah and then we have all the str the strategy about taking hold of the fort which it shouldn't come to a surprise to us that griffith is a good strategist because we had literally in episode two showing us that they were able to take a fort for three months when everyone said it was only gonna be for like three days so that should not be a surprise to us at all as the audience but Griffith is like a really calculated and strategic and he chooses to put guts to the rear guard and like the way that he smiles, like as nice as he looks, like the, like the face he gives guts, like it is, there's like a, a, an angelicness to him, but then he is totally fine with murdering everybody. So it's like, I, he's such a fascinating character and guts is like, Oh, and I like that Corcus believes that this is just going to get him killed instantly. I love Rickard has a little crossbow. Bless him. Bless his heart. And then Pippin and the one blonde don't, don't say anything. And Casca's like, no, Guts wasn't chosen for this because he's being tested. Like, this is too important of a job to test someone. He's like, no, he's trusting Guts. Like, he believes in Guts. And again, I feel like Casca is trying to figure out why. What about Guts makes Griffith believe in him? I think it's because Guts reminds Griffith so much of himself and what he would like to be if he wasn't putting on this persona. But yeah, it's so fascinating. And I love the idea that they're walking through, they're walking through the river with the horses to tie. Uh, there's a reason for it. They're going against the current so that the enemy won't suspect it. They're going against the wind so they can't hear it. Then the blonde throws the knife and knocks the one guy out instantly. It's all very efficient and very effective. And Grit and Guts, who's been on other raids before doing mercenary work himself, is like, wow, compared to the other jobs I've been on, Griffith really knows what he's doing. And he makes this efficient and clean. And I feel like that contributes to Guts maybe believing more in Griffith and trusting him more because he sees how he handles things. It's interesting, right? But yeah, they just show up and they just wreck the place. Griffith and everybody. And then we're left with Guts pulling up the rear with Rickert and everybody else. And what's so fascinating is that trust, I'll put this here, that trust in Griffith and that mutual, I guess that it's mutual, gets him, gets him to be a leader. That's kind of the crazy thing, right? The fact that Guts trusts him so much and the fact that Guts trusts Griffith and Griffith trusts Guts lets Guts kind of take on this leadership role without even realizing it. Because I was like, Guts is usually a loner. He doesn't want anything to do with anybody because he can't trust them. But because he understands and respects Griffith 
and develops that trust, he's able to take on that role. So it's, and I'm sure that it's strategic on Griffith's part. I'm sure it is. But it's so fascinating. And I'm glad he saved Rickert because I was like, don't let that boy die. Now here, when the guys that run the castle, they get back and they're like, oh, good job, Griffith. They'll be stalled for at least a month. And all Griffith said was he bowed to them and said, I still have my duties to complete. Like, he's like, excuse me. And they're like, what an insolent attitude. I was like, how is he insolent? He bowed to you and was like, hey, sorry, I gotta go do my other stuff. I was like, what's wrong with you guys? Like, that I think also establishes that Griffith is not a kiss ass. I think that also establishes Griffith saying that he had other things to do. He's not gonna sit there and, and you know, make small talk and kiss ass. He's like, I have a job to do as a leader, so I'll thank you, bye. You know, I, I do think that adds more to his character in that one little moment. But they're like, man, Guts was the main reason we all got out. He handled the group of heavy cavalrymen all by himself. And you see Casca looking like, hmm, so Griffith could do the job. And he's like, he really is something. And then I see Rickert come back. Guts sent me on ahead. And I like the blonde guy goes, I hope he's still alive. Like, they, like, they haven't known him for like a few days and they're already like on Guts' side. And I feel like Griffith senses that everybody has an instant connection with Guts. They instantly like jive with him, except Corcus. But, and then Griffith decides to go save him. I was like, the moment Griffith comes up and he like reaches out his hand and grabs Guts to lift him up onto the horse and they grab hands to it. I was like, ah, I was like, you expect me not to ship them after this moment? What? No. I was like, nope, it's over. It's a done deal. And then Guts saying like he came back to get me. We're almost to the edge of the woods and then they disperse and then there are the cannons that take out the enemy. Yep. And then Griffith gets back and he looks so pleased. He's like, look, I found him. And Casca's like, huh, what do we do with this? Like, Griffith seems like he's found his new right-hand man. Again, I feel like Casca's a little bit worried, a little bit wary still. And we see Griffith surrounded by Rickert and the blonde and uh, Pippin somewhere in there. It's amazing the way Guts fought just as Griffith expected he has what it takes. And then Rickard's like, well, we have to go get him, right? Meanwhile, he's like, Griffith has the qualities of a great leader and the others rely on him completely. He's got perfect judgment and he knows how to take decisive action. He's more than just the leader of a mercenary band. Like, I feel like that's foreshadowing of Griffith, Griffith becoming the king. Like, he's got more he's got more to him than just being the leader of a mercenary band. Which, again, if Griffith is just using this as a stepping stone to get to the kingdom, then we'll see. But I, I find that fascinating, right? It's funny that you have Rickert and them talking about how Guts is a leader. And then you have Guts talking about how Griffith is a leader. And it's like you both are kind of in the same ballpark, right? But Rickert... Being like, thank you, I'm Rickard, I admire you. And I was like, oh my God, don't die, little kid. I love you to pieces. And I just love that Pippin, like, I love that Pippin, like, just grabs him and takes him down there. Because the blonde with the freckles is like, hey, we this, this is kind of not only a celebration of us winning, but it's also a welcome feast for you for saving the party. So get your butt down here. And Guts is like, I didn't ask for any of that. And the blonde's like, yeah, no, it doesn't matter. Come on, let's go. And that's when Pippin just grabs him. And he says, don't touch me. But it's not as pronounced as it was with the mercenaries back in episode two, right? It wasn't as last episode. It wasn't as pronounced as it was then. He still doesn't want people to touch him. But it's not as like, you're going to die. You know, he punches Pippin and Pippin's nose bleeds. And he's like, don't be shy. Mm -hmm. That's what they, they attribute it to be. Uh-huh. And then all the guys there tell him to drink, and they're all cheering him on. And you see all these smiling faces. You see Pippin and the blonde and Rickert, and I'm like, these guys are all going to die, aren't they? <laughs> I'm like, I don't get good vibes. I was like, I, we know that Guts ends up alone by episode one, so I'm like, either he abandons them and leaves them, 
or they all end up dying. And I'm not sure I'm ready for that. <laughs> we just met these characters. I'm not sure I'm ready for that. Ah, but yeah. He's sitting there drinking, and then everybody's like, you're a rookie. I like the one guy's like, you've got some issues, but you're still all right. <laughs> and Guts is like, whatever. And then you have Corcus saying that bastard, and you have Casca looking on like, what do we do with you? And then we have Griffith at the center of it all. Mm -hmm. Yep, Griffith at the center just looking right at him. Mm -hmm. And I like the guts, like, just goes, hmm. I'm like, you could not, what, it ships itself. It ships itself. I like just. <sighs> but yeah, I, I'm so curious what we're going to get now with the next episode. I'm very curious how this is going to go. But there's been so much happen. Like, we're only on episode three. I feel like I've been watching, like, half a season's worth of episodes. <laughs> And we're only on the third episode, so it's kind of crazy, right? Kind of crazy. But I'm just, I'm so fascinated by the relationship of these four characters. Of Corcus, of Casca, of Guts, and of Griffith. And I, and I like Pippin, I like the Freckled Blonde, and I like uh, Rickert too. But these four have the most kind of dynamic between one another. And so I'm very curious what we're going to get with them as the series goes on. Because I have a feeling that this series is going to be about their relationships and where it takes us. So we'll see, right? But oh my gosh, I'm so excited, y'all. I, I hope you enjoyed this reaction discussion. I'm excited to hear your thoughts down below, but I hope y'all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and yeah, ho y'all. I'll be back very soon with episode four of Berserk. Bye.